Hello again everybody, my name is Josh Lott, and welcome to the first installment of Auto Hotkey, and it's good, we've started off this uh, episode with a pun, you know, the installment, because we're going to be installing programs, get it? No? Okay. Anyways, so, uh, due to the overwhelming amount of support on the other video, <coughs> my um, bot for the impossible quiz, I've decided to do a tutorial on how to use Auto Hotkey, and this is going to be a series, maybe a ten part series, maybe? And, if, uh, and by the way, if there are any specifics you want me to help you with, so if the episode doesn't cover a certain topic, feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and I'll, I'm more than happy to show you how to do that. But let's jump right into this. So the first thing you're going to need is Auto Hotkey itself. And by the way, all the links to these programs and software will be in the description below. So you want to make your way over to www.autohotkey.com, and you'll be greeted with this lovely site here, and you want to hit download. And then you'll go in store. Now, uh, you really don't need to use other versions at this point in time, so we're going to go install, and it'll uh, install, and then you will, uh, as you would expect, install this. So, I'll show you how to do that, you probably can figure that out yourself, but... But now we need a text editor. Now, essentially a text editor. You can use Notepad if you want, I'm not uh, prejudiced against people using Notepad, but it's not exactly very good for what we want to be doing, because we want something that'll help us with syntax and just a whole bunch of other kind of useful things. So I recommend, for Auto Hotkey specifically, I would recommend C, uh, sorry, S-C-I-T-E-4 Auto Hotkey, so C-I-T-4 Auto Hotkey it's called. Um, Notepad++ works great as well, but the one I'm going to be showing you how to use is Sublime Text. Uh, it's a very, very good program for what we're going to be doing, and you can, as you can see by this uh, site here, it gives us a little, uh, insight as to what the program actually does. So this link will be in the description below and we'll hit download for Windows. Uh, now apparently this thing supports other platforms but I'll be running on Windows 7. So if certain things don't work it might be because of the version of Windows you're running. So you want to get yourself Sublime Text and that's at this point in time that's all we really need. So now we're going to boot up Sublime Text that we've already got. Now this is actually currently what my order of hotkey script looks like. This is kind of my, my global one that I use in a way. So this is the one I use all the time just for uh, various stuff, but we'll save that actually. So we'll actually close all these because we don't need those for today. And this is what it's going to look like. And as you can see down here, it says plain text, and we'll get to that later. So now that you've got auto hotkey and sublime text, let's go and make ourselves a script. That's the first thing we're going to do. So. Navigate your way to a folder of some sort, and you want to right-click, and you want to go New, Text Document, and then you'll get a text document. So we're going to call this, um, ep actually, episode, actually, we'll call it Auto Hotkey Tutorial. And you, this is important by the way, you want to end it with dot .ahk for Auto Hotkey, and you hit Enter, it'll say do you want to change the file extension, you hit Yes and we will get a .ahk script. Now it looks, okay, now it's just taking a bit, bit of a time, let's just up, refresh the icon. Here we go. So it's, it looks like an H, which is what we want. And now we're going to open this in Sublime Text, so we grab this and we drag it into Sublime Text, and you'll see a little pop-up little uh, kind of box here. Now there's nothing here yet, and that's fine. So the first thing we're going to do in this script is show you how to do stuff. So. The first thing I guess I'll show you is how to do notes. Notes are extremely useful when you're coding and when you've got a lot of code, because notes just organizes everything and you can, and if you come back to a script, if you write a script and then come back to it in a few days and you look at it, sometimes you're not going to know what does what. So using notes and comments as they call it as well is really, really beneficial. So the first, the way you want to actually make a note on a document is you want to hit the semicolon button and I put a space, you don't really need. And then you can basically type in your comment. So this is a comment. And the thing about comments is that when you run the script, a comment is not counted as anything. So it won't do anything. It's just there for the visual aspect of it so I can tell what I'm doing. And that's the first bit. Now, as you can see, this is in purple. And as you can see down here, it says auto hotkey. When you first boot this up, yours will just say plain text, which is... So it'll say plain text, and this is what yours is going to look like. And actually, thinking about it, yours is probably actually going to look like... Where is it? Word wrap ruler layout... 
Uh, yeah, it's here some wealth color scheme. Here we go. Uh, yours is probably going to look like this, and I've just changed my color scheme, and this is what I'm going to be using for my videos. I recommend you doing this one. It's actually a very good contrasting one. So you want to go color scheme, and then you won't have a user file yet, but you want to go color scheme, and then you want to select the top one, All Hallows Eve, and that just looks really nice. Now yours is going to look grey, okay? And that's because this is set under plain text and there's no proper syntax yet. So if we were to type in a command in auto hotkey, so like, you know, a function, so msg box as a message box, nothing's going to happen, it's going to stay grey, and everything else we write um, will also be in grey like this. So what we want to do is we want to get the syntax highlighted. this. So what you would conventionally do is you would go under view, and you go to syntax, and you'd have a big list of all the different um, languages it supports. So it, it has things like C++, C Sharp, C Batch, JavaScript, Java, Lua, Ruby, all those good stuff. But it doesn't have auto hotkey, and that's the problem. So we have to go back to our trusty Internet Explorer here. <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to go back to Chrome, and you want to go to this site here. It's uh, going to be in the description below. Essentially, it's the kind of syntax that you're going to need. And you download this separately, so we'll go download zip. And you would get a zip as you would expect. So you probably are going to need a uh, WinRAR to open this, maybe not, but you basically want to extract this to... actually, no, not yet. What you want to do is you want to get the uh, thing in your clipboard. So get the um, zip we just downloaded, and we're going to cut it, which is Control x And now an easy way to navigate your way to this folder, by the way, is to go back into Sublime, you want to go Preferences, and then Browse Packages, and then it'll open up this, and this is basically, it's already navigated its way to the Sublime uh, subfolders, and it'll go into Packages. You want to go under User, and this is where you put your stuff, so we'll paste in the uh, zip file, and then you want to right-click on it, and go Extract Here. And that will then, I'll just delete this because I've already done it, it'll give you this folder here, and inside the folder we'll have uh, these uh, 13 files in here that you're going to need. If you open this and there's another folder which has all this in it, you want to just basically make sure that it's only a folder and then the stuff like this. So you want to make it look like mine. And then once you've done that, go back into Sublime, so we'll exit off this, and you want to go under View, Syntax, and then you'll see it's not under A, you want to scroll all the way to the bottom and then click the little down arrow if it doesn't show it, and you want to go under User, and then you want to go on Auto Hotkey. And now you see it's turned purple. But, uh, by the way, it only turns purple because that's the uh, colour scheme I've chosen, by the way. But I just like it because it, it shows comments really well. So, now what you want to do is we're going to perform a basic function, probably one of the most basic things you can do with an auto hotkey script. I'm going to show you how to make a message box. So, as you can see now, when we type in msg, you'll see we get a list of uh, different things or different functions that you can do in auto hotkey with these different. Uh, operations. So if you hit enter, it will show you the command, which is message box, it'll auto fill it in for you, and then it'll tell you the syntax. So in this case you can do message box, and then you put in the option, the title, the text, and then the timeout. Now I actually find this quite annoying because you actually have to delete that. in order. So if, you, if I type in message box, I actually have to then delete this, and then remove the comma to do what we, what we want to do. So I recommend if you want to know how to do it, just type in msg, it'll show you, and then just keep typing it in. So, the first thing we're going to do is make a message box. So you type in msg box, like this, one word, and then type in the message. So let's go, this, oopsie, this is a test. And then we go control s to save, and we're going to go back to here, and then just double click on it. And you'll see we get a little message box here, and it's going to say autohotkeytutorial.ahk, which is the name of our file, by the way, and it'll say this is a test. We hit OK. That is the first thing we can do. And you can change this to anything you want. You can have multiple lines, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I won't show that in this video, but that's basically how to make a message box. The next thing we're going to show you, and I was zipping through this very fast, I'm sorry, but... And, and uh, by the way, if, if I'm going too fast, comment it in the section below, and I'll tell you how to do certain things. So, we've got notes, we've got message box. Now we need to actually trigger this message box. So currently, when you run the script, that's all we've got. It's just going to trigger the message box, and that's it. So we're going to make it so when we do something, when we put in a certain combination on the keyboard, then it'll display the message box. And this is the beauty of Auto Hotkey, because, as you can probably tell from the name, 
it creates hotkeys. And a hotkey is like Control C, Control V, Control X, or Control Shift, Windows Alt W. That's a shortcut. In fact, the one I use, I use Control Shift Alt Windows S for shutdown. It's quicker than moving my mouse down here and clicking, but also at the same time, it's uh, it's uh, long enough so I don't accidentally click it. So the way you do this, and by the way, uh, you might have noticed on my other auto hotkey script is that I had a whole bunch of comments at the top telling me what each shortcut. And I'll explain to you what that means. Is I just find it much easier to. I mean, I've memorized it at this point, but I recommend when you're making one to just jot these down because. The way to make a hotkey is you want to, let's say we want to make it control, I don't know, let's say control L to, or c control M to make a message box. The shortcut for control is this little um, up thing. I don't know what it's actually called, unfortunately, but you hold down shift and you click six and it'll uh, print in this little icon here. That is the shortcut for control and we'll write that actually up here so we can hit enter. It doesn't matter how many uh, enters or any breaks in here, it won't register them. So we do comment, which is the semicolon button next to the L, and we'll type in control equals and then the little up arrow. And this is comment, so it won't do anything, it's just so we can remember. And while I'm at it, I'll show you what the other ones are. So shift is equal to the plus button. The, uh, what is it? Uh, control shift. Alt is equal to exclamation mark. Uh, what else is it? Windows. So Windows is equal to the hashtag, which is Shift 3. And what's another one? That's really all I can think of uh, at this point, at least those ones. Oh, by the way, if you want to specify between, let's say, the left shift and the right shift, all you need to do is go, ah, uh, let me think, actually. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You do the, um, the little uh, greater than or less than sign. So if we want to do the one to the left, we go left control, because it's pointed to the left. So it'll be left control as opposed to just control. So that's just there for reference. And I also then have a link to the actual LUM site that has all these. You can find these actually if you just Google uh, auto hotkey input, or yeah, actually that's pretty much all you need to Google. I just closed it, didn't I? Let's, oops, jeez. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. Here we go. Uh, let's just Google auto hotkey uh, input. Sorry, input, there we go. Sorry, I'm horrible at typing today. We'll close these off by the way. So we'll don't need these anymore. So you can go to this one here, I believe, the send, send raw, and that should have a list of all the different things. Yeah, okay, here we go. So the alt is exclamation mark, shift is plus, control is the little up thing here, shift and stuff, and it's got a whole bunch of all of these. So if you want to use tab, you have to use these squiggly brackets and then the word inside it. This also works for control and other things. So if you want to do uh, where is it? It's, it's somewhere. So shift, for example, instead of exclamation mark, you can use squiggly brackets and then type in shift. That also works. So like I was saying, with left and right shift, you just do L and then the word. So that's all well and good as well. So it's, I guess it's a bit easier, but longer than using the shortcuts. So we want to make it uh, control M. That is our shortcut. So you see what the control symbol and then the M symbol. And then you put two colons. That means this here is now a hotkey. Okay? This will then trigger events any other events after this line here. Now, we can just uh, take this and then put this here, and this will work, so let's see. We'll control S, save the script, and we'll run this. And you see down in the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the icon tray, we've got the J, that's uh, my script here, but the H here, which is the default one, it'll say autohotkeytutorial.hk, and it'll be there. You can actually right click, you can suspend, reload, edit, Open Windows Spy, I'll show you that in a future video, or maybe maybe even this one, and pause the script. So to activate it, we'll go Control M, and you see we get a little pop-up or message box saying, this is a test. And that's basically how to make that. Now, if you want to make one hotkey, Control M, do multiple things, what you do is, we'll just get this and save it in the clipboard, you put, you go to Enter, add squiggly brackets and hit enter, and the way this program works, it'll automatically dent it for us, so it'll make it look like this, and we can paste it in there. This is the exact same thing as what we had before, so it'll go control M, will do anything, any functions within these two brackets, which is only this in this case. So we can do message box test, and then what you want to do is you want to go return. And just that, that's it, just leave return. Because what return does is return says, okay, I've done everything that this hotkey is meant to do, 
don't do anything else. So for example, if we had some other functions down here, uh, if we didn't have a return, it would just fire off those functions straight away. It'll, as soon as we do control M, it'll do anything in here and anything after. We don't want that. So we add a return and that'll stop it. So if we did uh, another message box over here, we went message box, uh, don't block me. And you see that by th that auto corrected just then, so oh, I guess auto grammar corrected. So if I do don't and go space, you'll see it actually auto does it. That's actually an auto hockey script that um, is available on the internet. I didn't make it, disclaimer, I'll give a link to that maybe as well. But if we do this, it hypothetically should not display this last message. So we'll run this. Uh, it'll sense if you haven't closed it, which is right click and then go exit, it'll ask you to replace it. Just hit yes and then it's fine. Uh, so now we'll do control M, we'll get the first message box, and the way these scripts work is they'll wait until you've hit OK, until you've hit OK for it to do the next thing. So we'll go enter, or OK, and that's it, it does not display this message box. And I guess that'll do it for the first episode, I hope you liked it. Uh, in the second episode we will be showing you how to basically send input, so how to make it automatically type, automatically uh, click left and move the mouse and stuff. And so I guess look forward to that, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.